Hey guys, it's Bryony, long time no see. Um, I haven't done a video in a few weeks, so I've just been sort of taking a bit of a social media break from doing videos um, and just other bits of social media in general, to be honest. Just, I think it's good for everyone to have a bit of a detox sometimes, but also doing videos every week can be quite stressful because you've got to come up with the idea, you then got to film it, got to edit it, got to upload it, all that kind of stuff. So it adds quite a bit to my plate. But also, I had, um, if you saw my last video, I had some refugee guests staying here and there were three of them, which meant there are only certain times they were quiet and often I still had to do work in there so um, yeah it was kind of hard to find, they were next door as well so kind of hard to find a quiet time for that and it just ended up getting later and later and later but also because I wanted to do this video I've decided the way that I'm kind of structuring my videos now is to not have a specific timeline but to just sort of do videos as and when I feel like I've got a topic that I feel really passionate about or inspired by because I think I do better videos when I'm like that and um, I'd wanted to do this video a couple of weeks ago but then things didn't quite work out how I had hoped um, so that's why I've put it off and you'll see why in a bit later on in the story but I wanted to talk to you today about my last period because it really is the period that I sort of finally broke basically. Those of you that have been following me for a long time, you will know that I have had painful periods for about seven years now. They started when I was 15 and then when I was nine, no, two years ago, I was diagnosed with adenomyosis, which is a condition that affects my uterus, basically means that the lining of my uterus has started to grow into the muscle of my uterus and it makes my periods very painful. When I finally got that diagnosis, it was quite a relief um, to be able to know what was going on and then I sort of decided to start trying several things and different supplements and stuff to tackle it and I've had like mixed success over the years of being able to get my period con pain under control and then it's coming on back up again and back and forth and it, it's just been a bit of a nightmare and I've always always put off trying like hormonal contraceptives to manage it because I really wanted to find a way to do it naturally if I possibly could without sort of messing with my hormones however last month um I had a pe I had really bad period pain the first day and I was just like do you know what I am now at a point where I'm really sick and tired of going through this every month, having to plan my month around my periods, and it's kind of worked up until now because my job is around periods and stuff, but as I'm doing more and more things, it's just getting in the way more, and so I was thinking, do you know what, maybe I would be willing to try something else hormonal like going on the pill. I have been saying for ages that I do not want to go on the pill. There's still a part of me that really doesn't want to, but there's a bigger part of me now that has got to the point where like, I'm sick of dealing with this. So I'm kind of willing to try and see how it goes. So after I've made that decision, and I mean, the, the weird thing about this period was, it wasn't like one of the worst ones I've had. Um, I forgot this cycle to take, well I didn't, I kind of consciously decided not to take my Don Quay leading up to this last period. And um, it basically meant that the first day my pain, I just had constant like crampy, achy pains, even after I'd taken like 600 milligrams of ibuprofen, which is like a quite a high dose. And it like, I just wasn't able to do anything. I was in bed. Um, I had to get my parents to come around and pick me. I would have been fine left at home. I, you know, just grabbed like crisps or noodles, easy to eat stuff, but I wanted to have some proper food. So my parents came around, one of my parents came around, I can't remember which one, came over, picked me up, took me to their house for dinner, which we do anyway sometimes, and it was a Sunday, but um, like it just annoys me that I have to do that, and I don't want to be able to have to do that. Um, and I feel like I've got a point where I've got so much more independence now that having to have any sort of reliance on anyone else is just really annoying. <laughs> um, so, and, so day one was quite painful, but day two was fine. So it was like one day, but just really, really annoying. And uh, like I often think if I wanted to do any other sort of work, I couldn't do it because of my period. So that was one of the reasons I was starting to think, do you know what, maybe I'd be prepared to try something else. Um, and that was when I made an appointment to go and see the sexual health clinic that my local town has. Now sexual health clinics are really great because they often have like a team of experts in there. Um, I've been once before, not actually for anything kind of related to sexual health, but because I had really bad like stinging wee and they helped me out with getting me some cream and basically worked out that actually it was eczema. Because I kept getting asked, do you have cystitis? cystitis and I was like no I've been tested for this 
literally a hundred times. Um, but they tested me again and said, yeah, you're fine. And they checked, did lots of swabs and stuff and they came back fine too. So it was just eczema and they managed to work it out. So they were really great. Um, and they have like a walk-in option too, but I did decide to book online with the sort of contraception clinic. So about two weeks ago, this is where I was a bit disappointed, I went to this meeting, because as I said, before I've had a really good experience with them, went to the contraception clinic and uh, saw the nurse, went through lots of things and basically what she said to me is because I've got underlying issues, she couldn't give me or prescribe me the contraceptives without me seeing a specialist. I mean, it's great that they have a specialist that they can refer to and I managed to get an appointment this month as well, which is really rare, um, but it was just a bit of a no bit annoying because I was like, I don't want to wait any longer. I really want to stop before my next period comes. I don't want to have another one anymore really at this point. I'm kind of done. <laughs> like I said, it just, it was a period where I was like, I am done. So then this weekend, uh, my mom has a really close friend that she's known for ages I think and they both recently turned 60 this year so she'd come down and spend time with my mum and she happens to be a gynaecologist so I was able to speak to her this weekend she said she was happy to give me some advice so I had a conversation with her about it and the main thing that issue that I've got is I don't want the marina everyone recommends the marina for period pain and I'm like that's great but I'm just not comfortable with the idea of having something inside me at all and it's really important for those you considering contraception that you don't feel pushed into something that you're not comfortable with or you don't want so I was saying I might consider it further down the line but I've been very unlucky because I do have a friend of mine a quite close friend who's had an IUD perforate through her uterus and cause infertility and for me I've attached so much of my um, I don't know, I don't really know how to describe it, but when I've gone through like my chronic health issues, the way that I've managed to sort of push myself through them is to get through them is by thinking it doesn't affect my fertility. So if that did happen to me with the IUD perforated through and causing infertility, I genuinely have no idea what my mental health would be like afterwards. And at the moment, I'm fine. So I don't, it's just something I don't really want to mess with. And it's not a quick fix where if it goes in and I have horrible side effects or whatever, which is possible because my body reacts very weirdly to stuff and hormones I've been told to be careful about. Out. Um, I can't like just take it out myself, I have to go and get it taken out and then sometimes doctors don't want to listen to you, which is not right, they should do, but they'll try and persuade, you just feel like you're sort of persuaded into things and there's no control over, there's less control of that than say something like a pill or a patch where you can just stop it yourself if things got really, really bad. Side note, completely forgot to add in this video, some of you may remember I have tried the contraceptive patch before, but unfortunately the side effects from this was so severe with me that after four weeks I was like, I can't. I can't go back on it again, it's just, it's it's caused me too much issues with like side effects, they were so severe, they were affecting everyday things. Um, and that was the first time I sort of gave in and thought I'll just give it a try and see how I react, and that was not so good. And this is why they suggested I try the pill without oestrogen first. And so that's one of the issues that I've had, but yeah, anyway, so the marina is something I everyone always mentions, but it's just not something I'm comfortable with enough yet. Um, so I had a great conversation with my mum's friend this weekend and she basically gave me some recommendations for pills to try in what order um, with my personal health. So the suggestion that she gave me personally was to try um, the regular dose of progesterone uh, pill, only pill first. Then if that I had issues with to try the low dose progesterone pill and if I had issues with that one to try the low dose estrogen pill or the NuvaRing at that point. And actually I'm not totally off the idea of the NuvaRing because I mean I'm very used to putting menstrual cups in my vagina anyway, so putting a, a ring up there around my cervix just doesn't bother me much. <laughs> that would be fine with me. Um, and it would also bypass my liver, which might cause some of the issues because I have problems with my liver. So it's really great that I was able to ask her advice this weekend. And one of the things that people don't often realize about the pills is that the idea that you have like three weeks of the pill and then one week of a sugar pill or something like that, you don't need to have that sort of fake period. It gives you like a fake period basically, but that's only because they think that we want to replicate our regular cycles, which some people might want to, but actually you don't need to do that. So that's why they say you can overlap packets, but of course you should always check with your doctor before doing this and don't take advice off of YouTube, even from people like me. But the thing that she was saying to me was that it kind of depends on how my body reacts to the hormones rather than the periods, because I could probably stop the periods or at least over several months, it should sort of slowly accumulate and work up to a point where I have very little or any periods at all. And I remember my cousin took this particular pill and she virtually stopped getting periods too. So that was kind of useful to know. So for me, the main issue is gonna be seeing whether or not my body can tolerate these sorts of hormones because having had Lyme disease and it particularly affecting my liver, you just don't know because a lot of things are metabolized in the liver. But it's looking like there are options now aside from the marina and that's the main thing I wanted to see. So it might well be that I try these and actually my body says, no, this isn't gonna work. And this is where I have a really big dilemma because 
if it affects me day to day and makes me feel really low and really tired and everything, for the sake of having less pain, like one to two days a month, that's where I have to work out, is it worth it? Because I do only get pain for that one or two days a month, then it might be that I eventually come to the conclusion that actually, the best thing for me is just, is to continue what I've been doing, which is trying to work around that day and see if I can manage it more like that, um, if I can get the pain more under control with other meds and stuff. But I wanna give it a try now, and I think, as I said, I just reached the point where I was really like, I have had enough. So I fortunately this morning was able to actually get online and book an appointment today with my GP, which is like a small miracle. Um, so I'm gonna go over later and I'm gonna see if I can get the pills off of them. And now I've had the conversation with my gynecologist. Cause I think the issue with when I went to the clinic is I was only able to see a nurse um, that day. Whereas I can actually see a GP, they're a doctor. Um, so I think I might be able to get them to prescribe it, but I don't know. So <laughs> fingers crossed for that. And uh, we'll see later on, but yeah, I'm hopeful, and I'm going to this with a positive um, idea. So, it might well be that there aren't any period vlogs going forward for a little bit of time. And I've already sort of stopped filming just the last two because I was thinking it'd be good to have a bit of a break while I sort of rethought how I was gonna film them. But it might be that they become more sporadic as we see how they are. Um, but it'll be really interesting to see, I think, what my first periods are like on the pill, um, how heavy they are, how painful they are, that sort of thing. So I will be filming it from now on um, and letting you know like what my experience is with them and I might film the whole experience actually with the first time taking it too. Fingers crossed. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. I just wanted to kind of record this moment because it's such a big thing for me. Like I've been so anti wanting to go on the pill for ages and ages, but I think there comes a point where you just reach the point of I've had enough. And I just want to be able to do regular things and I shouldn't have to put up with this stupid pain and um, because there's no money that invested in women's health stuff, I don't think there's gonna be any cures for things like adeno endo anytime soon, which is really sad, but there needs to be more um, invested in there. But I wanted to give you this a bit of an insight and as I said, I'm gonna continue to share my journey with this going forwards. But how many of you have switched to using a type of contraception to manage your periods? What types have you tried? What types have helped? Be really useful to know and obviously great to share as a community. As you probably noticed, you can't comment on these videos, YouTube's turned the comments off. Ugh. Long story, thanks for my mind. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll know about that. But you can comment on my Facebook and my Instagram pages. The links are both down below. So feel free to head on over there and check those out. And of course, you can buy cloth pads and menstrual cups from Precious Stars. The link is down below. That'll be the one thing I do miss, actually, if I do end up stopping my periods because I do love using my cloth pads and I think menstrual cups are awesome. So for those of you still menstruating, definitely go check them out um, as they are really awesome and life-changing and that's the whole reason I started a business selling them. Thank you so much for watching guys. Do please subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye everyone. I just got back from the GP. Success.